laptops, prototypes, concepts, and peripherals, CES always brings some exciting new products for gamers, and this is a roundup of my absolute faves. Hey, I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code. Let's talk gaming laptops. Acer showed off some new desktop pre-built machines, but they also had some pretty swanky looking laptops for gaming. The Predator Triton 500 SE for special edition includes a 12th gen Intel CPU, a 3080 Ti laptop GPU, and optional upgrades to storage and RAM. This one is all metal and it has Acer's triple fan system for cooling. It also has 240 hertz refresh rates and a three millisecond response time plus G-Sync technology. And this one will start at 2300. The Predator Helios 300 clocks in with a 165 hertz Quad HD IPS display, a 3080 laptop GPU or a 3070 laptop GPU. They have toned down the gamer vibes on this machine with a cleaner chassis and a thin light bar below the palm rest. This one will run you 1650 and go up from there. Acer also showed off the Nitro 5 with a variety of options. So you could grab one with a 12th gen Intel CPU or an AMD Ryzen 6000 processor and up to a 3070 Ti GPU from Nvidia. The Nitro 5 will cost 1050 plus. All of Acer's gaming laptops are basically a step up with newer specs from the previous generation with the Helios 300 and the Nitro 5 featuring new cleaner designs. All of them are slated for March, April, or May releases. Then we have Asus, which if you did not know is derived from the word Pegasus, hence the pronunciation there. They brought their ROG Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 and G15 to the show. The G14 includes a Ryzen 9 6900HS and up to the Radeon RX 6800S for graphics. It will also sport a 120 hertz quad HD screen at 500 nits. Now these will have up to 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. The G15 will pack in a Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor and up to an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU, plus a quad HD 240 hertz three millisecond panel. It will support up to 48 gigs of RAM and up to a one terabyte SSD. Oh, and they now have webcams as well, so yay! The Asus Republic of Gamers Flow Z13 is surprising. This one is a 13 inch tablet form factor with gaming specs. It has a detachable keyboard that works with the XG Mobile External GPU dot combo. And the tablet includes an Intel Core i9-12900H processor, PCIe 4 upgradable storage. It has Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6E, integrated graphics, or you can choose Nvidia's 3050 Ti GPU. The base model sports a 19 1920 by 1200 120 hertz display, but you can go up to a 4K UHD at 60 hertz display, which is optional. And since it is a tablet, it also has a touchscreen. And since you can technically use it as a laptop format as well, it has a kickstand on the back. No availability information yet, so keep an eye out for more. Razer also announced the 2022 models for their Blade 14, 15, and 17, which now pack in DDR5 memory and the G. Force RTX 30 series GPUs, including the 3080 Ti as an option. MSI's big news was their laptops with i9 CPUs now include this thing called phase change liquid metal, which are pads that melt when the CPU gets over 137 Fahrenheit or 58 Celsius. This pad of liquid metal will fill in the space between the thermal block and the CPU to improve heat transfer and cooling performance by 10%. They also made several configurable upgrades as you would expect to all of their lines, including the Stealth with the GS77 and the GS66, which now include the Intel i9-12900H chipset and larger touchpads. The Raider GE76 and the 66 got power upgrades. They also sport new components from Nvidia and Intel. The new Vector line, which is starting with the GP66 and the GP76, both of which include those next-gen specs as 
as well. And then we have the Pulse GL76 and 66, which also got some component upgrades for that entry level lineup. And MSI also announced their Crosshair 15 Rainbow Six Extraction Special Edition laptop. So this one is a collab between MSI and Ubisoft, sporting bright yellow accents, and it packs in next gen specs as well, including a Core i9 processor and NVIDIA graphics. Gigabyte did the same thing with their Aorus 15 and 17, including both laptops with next gen graphics and processing. You will find models with Intel's 12th gen CPUs up to an RTX 3080 Ti and DDR5 support for memory. Lastly, we have Dell's Alienware, which updated their X15 R2 and the X17 R2 with the newest 12th gen Intel Alder Lake mobile CPUs, DDR5 memory, and NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs. The X15 R2 will have a few options for displays. You can get a 165 Hertz Full HD, 360 Hertz Full HD display, or you can get a 240 Hertz Quad HD display with NVIDIA G-Sync. While the X17 R2 will include a 165 or 360 Hertz Full HD display, or a 120 Hertz 4K display. And Dolby Vision and Atmos support will be included in both. It's the same story with the M15 and the M17. I am starting to feel like a parrot over here. Those ones also got refreshes, although these include either the new AMD or the Intel chipsets and graphics. Now, my favorite announcement from Alienware is the X14, which wow, this thing is so slim. It's very, very slim at 0.57 inches. It includes an Alder Lake i7 12700H processor, 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, which is DDR5, an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, or a 3060 for graphics, and it will also have 60 watts to 85 watts of power draw. This one is smaller than my current X15 machine, which I have reviewed on the channel. I use that for video editing on the go, so I am definitely interested in the X14 just for the portability at conventions. That would be very, very nice for a content creator. Before before I get into the concepts and peripherals, I want to thank my sponsor. Whether you are looking to pick up ethical hacking skills that you can use for bug bounties by learning about popular web-based vulnerabilities, or whether you are looking to start building or accelerating your cybersecurity career, my sponsor, which is Cyber, spelled C-Y-B-R, they have a limited time offer. You can get 20% off any training by going over to cyber.com slash morse code, which is spelled just like the title of this show. And you Use the coupon code Morse code right now until January 14th. It's a limited time. The coupon can even be used on bundles that are currently 50% off, but those also expire soon. So if you want to grab these deals, grab them soon. These bundles and courses include a CompTIA Security Plus certification preparation course with videos and text-based lessons, as well as a practice exam that includes multiple choice and performance-based questions. They also include courses on web-based vulnerabilities where you can learn how to find vulnerabilities using both manual approaches and automated tools. You can exploit them with hands-on examples that you can follow along with step by step, and you can learn how to protect applications from those type of attacks. All of this is practical and actionable training that you can use to start or advance your cybersecurity career, or that you can provide to your engineering team as well. By the way, all the sales come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so this is a risk risk-free and it's an affordable investment that will accelerate your cybersecurity career. So don't wait, use that coupon code Morse code today. It's only available for my viewers on this channel and that's it to grab this really sweet deal before it expires on January 14th. And thank you so much to Cyber for sponsoring my CES content. All right, let's get into peripherals. I'm also going to include some monitors and displays here. So Acer also announced a couple of monitors and a really Really big display. So the monitors are the Predator X32 and the X32 FP. Both are IPS and both feature UHD displays with 160 hertz or 165 hertz refresh rates respectively. Now these are 32 inch monitors. The X32 FP also includes an HDMI 2.1 port for 4K console gaming and it's quoted as the fastest 4K monitor currently available. Both of these will release in Q3 with the X32 priced at $2,000 and the X32 FP 
priced at $1,800. They also had their Predator CG48 monitor, which is the big boy. This thing is 48 inches. It's an AMD FreeSync monitor with a 4K OLED 138 hertz panel. This one also packs in HDMI 2.1 and also has a 0.1 millisecond response time. So excellent for console gaming. This display will be released in Q3 for $2,500. The new Asus Republic of Gamers Strix Flare 2 Animate is a cute little keyboard. It's adorable. Okay, it's a normal size keyboard. It's got an LED display in the corner, which is the thing that makes it special. You can use this for stuff like system information or time, date, animations. You could put your logo there if you're a Twitch gamer. Plus there are physical media controls. There's RGB, all the things, and a wrist rest with a diffused LED along the edge. Now this will be 200 bucks and it will include several different switch options as well if you have a preference, including Cherry MX and the Republic of Gamers NX choices. Samsung demoed this very ultra wide display, which is called the Odyssey Arc monitor. It's curved at 1000R, which that's a pretty strong curve and it matches a human's field of view. Very interesting little sciencey piece there. It's unique because you can rotate it vertically and it's a 55 inch display. So this thing would tower over you if you were using it. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine with a 4K resolution and it includes a wireless dial to manage the monitor settings. No price point on this one yet. Lastly for this section is the Asus Republic of Gamers gaming router, which is the first quad band Wi-Fi 6E gaming router, and it packs in a Broadcom 2.0 gigahertz quad-core 64-bit CPU, 2.4 gigahertz, two 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz protocols. It also has a 2.5 gig WAN port and 1 gig LAN ports, and it comes in at a whopping $650. Now, generally, concepts and prototypes never make it to market, but they're still cool, and they are really pretty to look at. And sometimes they do surprise us and they do make it into mass production, like the mask that Razer came out with last year. So first is Project Sophia from Razer. This is a modular gaming desk concept and it's a table with screen modules that could be customized to fit your needs. Alienware's Project Nix also had a working model. Now this is a black box server that sits in your home and it lets you stream games onto multiple devices at the same time. So this could let you stream four different games at at the same time around your household. For example, you could start playing a game on your PC and then you could switch to a living room TV and move the game over to the bigger display. If somebody else is already playing a game on that TV, Project Nix could split the screen so both people could play side by side. This one actually does not sound as gimmicky or way too futuristic since game streaming is already a thing nowadays. And this last one, it needs a mention, although we have not actually seen the product yet. So Sony brought us some PSVR news on the VR2. It'll be single corded to deliver 4K HDR at 90 or 120 Hertz. It will have a 100 degree field of view. It'll be OLED at 2000 by 2040 per eye. The connection will be type C and it won't require any camera because the headset will include tracking built in plus eye tracking. The controllers will have rumble motors and they now have have a name. They're called the Sense Controllers. Now we have a game to get hyped about too. Horizon Call of the Mountain for PSVR 2 is being made exclusively for this and it's a tie into the Horizon Zero Dawn world. So just that fact alone makes me kind of excited because that was a really cool game. So that's a wrap on CES 2022 and some of my favorites to come out of the show this year. If you missed it, I did make a playlist of my favorite CES 2022 videos over here. And you can also subscribe right down below for more consumer and prosumer tech content. Thank you again so much to Cyber for sponsoring and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.